Okay, now. <clears throat> Welcome to Changing the Narrative with Red and, and Stacy. And Stacy. And Bertles. And we're Bertles, here. Bertles, Bertles, Bertles. Go ahead. And we're here to share our lives and our journey in South Africa. If you hear moaning and groaning in the background, it is our two yeah. boar bulls. They don't care that we're filming. Yeah. It ain't no ditty activities. They. <laughs> it ain't no ditty activities. And they are <laughs> upset because we have put them in their rooms. <coughs> and um, they don't like it because apparently... They need to be up under us at all times. So, that being said, ignore it or giggle, whatever you want to do. <laughs> if you're here, that means that you're interested in this comment, in this content. So, make sure that you subscribe, hit the like button, and share it with anybody else that you think would be interested in what we have to talk about. Uh, we talk about all things living in South Africa, experiences that we have, food, um, where to stay, what to do. So if you're looking to move here or visit here, go check out some of our videos. There's some really good content out there. Um, and we tell... And you might even hear a dog moaning in the background. He can even tell you where to get good dogs from. <laughs> Let's hope yours don't moan the way I was moaning. They probably will. Because they have attitudes. But anyway... That's neither here nor there. We're not here to talk about dogs today. Stacey, what are we here to talk about? Well, this one here is about friendships. When you when you leave in the States, you're going to leave some friends back, you mm -hmm. know, behind. And um, let's just talk about that. So this is our third installment of Testimony Tuesday. Did we say that? Because we had to, like, restart. <laughs> The dogs were moaning even more than they are right now. Um, but yeah, so go ahead and tell us about, like, because you're getting ready to go back to the States uh, today. You know, like, people that have been following us, they know that I dread going back to the States. Mm -hmm. this, this, this time here, I'm actually looking forward to it. Um, I'm going to see some friends and family that I haven't seen in a while. I'm gonna actually share a few things during it's been this like part. Two years, hasn't it? No, it's been like a year. Since you seen Chant? Well, it's been longer than that, probably. No, nah, it's it's been like two. It's been two. Maybe years, about two years, probably. Two years, yeah. You know, but I'm, I'm I'm gonna even share some other things that Red doesn't even know about about this friendship stuff. You'll see. You'll be surprised. But you know, when you're when you're relocating, of course, you want to leave some of your really good friends behind, mm -hmm. and hopefully, y'all y'all will stay in communication. For me, not so much. You know, I, I I pretty much made new friends and moved on. But I still have a few friends that I keep in contact with here and there. But for the most part, I left everything there. Mm -hmm. Now you thought you 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 still chop it up with your peoples. Like you still live there. I mean, so I have um like my best friend since childhood. We we go through periods where we like keep missing each other and stuff, but generally speaking, like um we probably talk like there's periods when we talk like every other day, and then there's periods where we talk like two, three, four times a month. It just depends on what's going on. But we stay in regular contact, like we know what's going on with each other and you know, if something happens, you know, she'll call me or I'll call her. Um, so yeah, and then when I, when I go in town, you know, we hang out, um, you know, she my bestie. Um, I think like, I don't know why, <laughs> for the most part, like I keep in contact with, um, my immediate family, like, um, my brothers and sister, I talk to them pretty regularly. Um, well, Two of my brothers I talk to pretty regularly. My two younger brothers, we don't talk that much. But when I'm in town, it's all love, you know. We don't talk that much. But my my uh, two old, not they're not older than me, but they're the next two under me. Um, and one of them is a weirdo. Oh, all my all my no, family. No, Darian's is a, weirdo. a weirdo, weirdo. 
Darian is definitely a weirdo. He's a weirdo. <laughs> Look, how are you just going to call his name like that? I wouldn't even know I'm talking about him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we talked a little bit last time about like missing, you know, missing time with family and stuff. But I feel like it's a little bit different with friends because they're like... They're like your chosen family, and a lot of times you spend more time with your friends than you than your than your your family. You know, like once your kids grow up and stuff. Um, you know, and I was living in Houston for a long time, and I have a couple of really really good friends in Houston, and I really don't stay in contact with them when I'm here. But we always find time to catch up and hang out when I'm in Houston, and the same thing when I'm in in Maryland. So. You know, it's just, it's harder to stay in contact. Like, one thing that I would tell people if you have family in the States, make sure <coughs> they download either WhatsApp or Google Meets. Make sure that they have those apps on the phone because, and I don't know if it's like that for all uh, phone carriers, but for me, um, we use T-Mobile. And even if you're on a Wi-Fi call, if you're making a regular call on Wi-Fi, you still might get charged those uh, roaming minutes, whatever the roaming minutes charge. I think it's like, I want to say it's, it's, it's like 25 cents a minute and then it goes up after a certain time. I don't remember, but it's, it adds up. If you're on the phone for an hour or two, a couple times a month, it adds up. Um, so definitely make sure that they have those apps on your, on their phones and that way you can still can't stay in contact with, you know, regular phone calls or video calls. Um, and it's just about, you know, like making time. And if the people that are in on the other side of the world, like understand like, okay, this is the time during the day that they are, we're both awake. And you just kind of have to like scrunch it in, schedule it. Like I schedule movie dates with my sister where we watch bad movies and laugh about them. Like, <laughs> that's like our thing. And then we talk the whole movie. I can't get that with him. Mm -mm. I can't, like, I'm talking during a movie and he's looking at me like. Shut up, please. I want to watch the movie. Like, I'm watching the movie in very much detail and I want to discuss it. Like, I want to. No. I want to talk about what's happening. No, see. And how I feel about no, it. No, y'all, she's different. And what I think is going to happen. No, 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 no. She, she, is totally, she can watch a movie 30 times and still act like it's the first time that she's seen that movie. I'm like, how is that even possible? And then she want, and then, and then she want to talk about everything. I just want to watch the movie. So I'm like, listen, I just don't want to, I'm, I'm, I don't want to watch movies with you. Because she wants to talk and I wants to watch the movie. I don't need a narrator. Look, we were watching The Lion King the other day. Oh, it was such a horrible movie. Horrible? Listen, I'm not no little kid. Horrible is a strong word. No, it's not horrible. But if at, at my age, one to ten... I give it a five. But like your 12 year old self. I don't, that's been too many years ago. I don't know. I don't know. Every time I watch the movie, I go back to like my little girl self. And I, and that movie came out in what, 96? 84, I believe. No, 84? I think it was 84. We looked, we, we looked at it. Remember? Was it, was it on 84? Mm -hmm. Or was something else 84? No, I think that was... Um, Never Ending Story or... Yeah, I think it was the Never Ending Story that came out in 84. Okay. Yeah, I, I think uh, Lion King came out in 96. Because I remember I was... I remember when it came out. Um, I think it was in 96. So Y'all let me know in the comments. But I was I was a kid when I first saw the movie. And I fell in love with it. It's still my favorite kids movie to this day. Like, between that and The Little Mermaid. Just because, like, she has my name. And I just really like the story. Just, you know, wanting Mario. something. Yeah, my bad. So you anyway. have a fish name. So anyway, let's get back to the, the topic at hand. So, something that you don't know that I do. Like, for instance, let me give you an example. Like my friend Archie. He drinks a certain kind of liquor. I've never drank that liquor, but now I find myself buying that drink because he because that's what he drinks. Oh, 
you know, um, and I got friends like that. That's I'm, I don't want to give too much of it out, but I do certain things like that because it makes me remember certain friends. You know, like every time I fire the grill up, I think about Chance. Oh. You know, so. I'm gonna start opening then, up. I'm and, gonna start opening up the top every ten minutes, just so it feels <laughs> more like Chance is around. And then, <laughs> and then, and, and then also like even on Facebook or something like that, I want to be messy. And I would mess, and I would like message one of my friends on Facebook, just to be. Me- I don't want anything, but I'm thinking about them right the second. So instead of me just saying, "Hey, what's going on?" I might call them a jerk or something like that <laughs> on Facebook, and then we go back and forth for a few minutes. You know, that's that's some of the things that I do to still, you know, to stay in contact. So that's why you randomly text me, jerk. And- no, I do that because that's what you are sometimes. That's totally two different things. Yeah, yeah. No, so it means you miss me. No, no, no. That means because you're a jerk. No, it means because you miss me. <laughs> no, 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 no. And also, like, another thing that I had, a, I had a, a small issue with, like, when we was in Houston, our house was like the party house. Mm-hmm. It was the hangout house. Mm-hmm. You know, I would just go mm-hmm. outside and want to want to grill, throw a brisket on or a Boston butt on or something like that. And next thing you know, the neighbors are out. Chance is coming over, Jason's coming over, Wayne is coming over, Andre, you know, whoever, Tommy, whoever's coming over is coming over. Mm-hmm. And now next thing you know, it's two o'clock in the morning, you know, so I don't have that here yet. You know, I got my neighbor right here that think he can cook better than me, but he can't. Uh, but that's my guy though. And yeah. um, the houses here are just not like if you live in like a... Like I, I've I've just found that people mostly keep to themselves here. Yeah, unless you invite keep them to themselves, and then like also like the places they were living that were renting. So people like you know cycle out and people move out and and stuff like that. But where we were living, it was a subdivision where like nobody had front gates. So it's just like you open up your garage or you're sitting out front, like everybody can see you. People stop by, come chat, and stuff like that. But here, like home security is so big that there's, you know, people have bars and gates outside their houses. So you really can't like just pop over and just knock on the door and be like, hey, what's going on? What y'all got going on today? Or, um, you know, see somebody out in the green, see smoke coming up from their from their house or something, but you can't really like just stop by. You gotta, you know, you you know what I'm saying. It's just like not as it's not as inviting. You know what I mean. But um, you know, we're and we're telling you this stuff not because like we hate it here. Like we're still here. Like we love it here. But it's mm-hmm. just you know getting getting used to those environmental differences. And like for me, I find that it's a little bit harder for me to make friends here. Because a lot of the a lot of the friends that I have, those relationships were built on commonality. You know, we worked at the same place, or our husbands knew each other. Um, you know, it was like a natural building of friendships. And like here, there's a lot of people from the U.S., but they're from all over the place. They do completely different work than I do and um live far and uh, yeah and a lot of them live kind of far away from us because we're in South Joburg and they're in the north you know what I mean so it's like a 40 45 minute ride or better um and it's just you know I'm just the type of person that I stay to myself a lot and it's not that I don't like socializing or anything like that, but it just takes a lot more than like, okay, we go out, we hang out, we have a good time, we chit chat, we laugh. Like, it's all cool. You know, and I look forward to seeing you again. But for me to have like a intimate friendship, I think like for guys, it's just completely different. Like y'all just <laughs> bump into each other consistently and now y'all are friends. Like... <laughs> But, like, for me, it takes a long time. Like, and the, the the good friends that I have have been my friends for 10 years or better. You know what I'm saying? My best friend, like, we've been friends for 30 years. You know what I'm saying? So, it's just, 
I find that it's a little bit harder to make friends because like we don't like even though it's a it's almost a seamless transition from the US to South Africa like you can get around, you can get along, you can do what you need to do, but there's like a culture there's just a cultural difference. You know what I'm saying? And it's just certain things that you just don't have in common, like the the basic things of like what's normal when you grow up. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's just it's just a little, it's just different, you know. Um, and I do have a couple of friends here that are um, that are South African that I would consider that I would consider good friends, but again, living so far away, and um, you know I work from 1 p.m. to 10 p.m. here. So during the week, like going out for a happy hour drink, not going to happen at 10 o'clock at night. I'm going to bed. You know what I'm saying? And then on the weekends, like I don't think about the weekend and like what's going on until the weekend. And then it's like, you got to try to fit in, get in where you fit in. And you know, I just, it's just, it's just harder for me here. You know what I'm saying? I can't just like walk outside and see my neighbors or just see my friends at work the next day or you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just a little harder for me personally. That's just my experience. But Stacy, <laughs> he's just like the Pied Piper when it comes to people in general. Like he's just walking around collecting friends like Pokemon. Like I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Big facts. <laughs> I can't. I can't even. I can't deny it. I just can't I'm deny a, it. I'm, I'm just a, such I'm a, a I'm wonderful a, I'm a, person. I'm a people, people person. People love being around. No, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm a people person. I know, yeah, you're a people person. Like he gets energized by like crowds and social interaction. And while I enjoy social interaction, having a good time and stuff like that, I also am drained afterwards. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I feel drained afterwards, but. I do enjoy it, just not as much, not as frequently, because I need to recharge mm -hmm. after a bunch of social activities, mm -hmm. you know? But, um, so I would say in closing, I would say the most important thing is like, make sure that you water the relationships that are really important to you, because even though you're gone, you're in another country and, you know, things are so different and you're, you're way further away, you know, it's, it's still comforting to be able to talk to somebody that knows you, that knows you, knows you, you know what I'm saying? That's been there for you through like hard times and stuff. So Make sure you water those those relationships. Stay in contact. Make an effort. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times people feel abandoned. Even your friends, not just your kids. Um, your friends, your parents. Um, you know, people that love you and are used to you being in a certain proximity to them. They're, they're going to feel abandoned. And because you're the one moving away... I feel like it's my responsibility to at least do my part, which is to make sure there's an avenue for you to contact me, that I make an effort to call you and check on you and see how you're doing and, and that kind of stuff. What would you say? No, I agree. And I think you said it best earlier. Make sure everybody has WhatsApp. That's, that's a free website. Mm -hmm. I mean, app to where, you know, you can communicate with each other and, and the time difference. Other than that, I mean, everything is good. However, I did make some good friends here. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, like she, the guy next door, uh, JS, mm -hmm. you know, Soweto. I got some good friends here now. And Delhi, yuck. But you, anyway. you work with a lot of those people too. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, that doesn't change the fact that you know, they're my guys now. And those are guys that I can trust. And um, yeah, those are my guys. Yeah. Even even some of the Americans, you know, Big Spooter. You know, um, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's my guy. 
Yeah. A co- yeah, it's it's a couple of the um American ladies here and Spoo is like That's the brother. The brother I and we can't forget that I never home. liked Assad's my guy. I, I definitely would have put him in a guy. box and sent Spooder. No. Oh, Spooda? I would have definitely put Spooda in a box and sent him to Abu Dhabi. <laughs> if you know yeah. what I'm saying, like if he was if he was a sibling, like I definitely would have got rid of him. Spooda and Asaz Magaz. So Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, it was it was something else I was gonna say. One thing that popped into mind. Ooh, what was it? Oh, I'm not saying this to like scare people or anything like that, but coming here, like you will you will feel accepted and loved and like feel important in a way just generally that I never felt in the States. Um, like a, a, a value is placed on you when you're here because you're American. And so just be wary of people that may present themselves as a friend to you, but they may have other intentions. And the the culture here that I've seen is that if there's one person in your friend group or in your family that's doing well, they are responsible for taking care of everybody. You know what I'm saying? And so if you become friends with people, the expectation sometimes, I'm not going to say in every case at all times, there may be a situation where you're the one getting the phone calls like, hey, you know, my mom needs medication or I need a ride somewhere or uh, I need money for transport. Like, like you'll start getting those calls in, 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 at a point where I think the friendship is too new. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, like I feel like there's, there's got to be like some time. time, you know what I'm saying? There's got to be some time and some some uh, some trust and stuff like that built up before those kind of requests come. Um, but sometimes they come kind of soon. And I'm not like I said, it's not every relationship, it's not every friendship, it's not everybody, but it does happen. And um, some people are just like, hey, like we're friends, and you got money, like why wouldn't you help me out because because I'm your friend and you just have to make trust your own personal boundaries. You know what I'm saying? If it doesn't feel right, then just say no. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't mean the person is bad or they're trying to get over you nece- on, on you necessarily. But um, it is it is something that happens. And it's just um, it's just kind of, a, I, I think, a cultural thing. Um, it's not, I don't think it's, it, in every case, like it's bad intentioned or anything like that. Um, but for me, it was a little, a little off-putting. Um, to experience that. But it's not, like I said, I don't think in most cases it's like trying to get over. It's just like, we're friends. I need some help. I know you got it. Help me out. You know, so just like I said, use your use your best judgment in those situations. Um, and, you know, set your personal boundaries and whatever they are. If the person doesn't accept it, then, you know, then they weren't really your friend. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you if you have to tell somebody no, like that shouldn't be the end of a friendship. So you'll know right then once you place your personal boundaries whether or not it was a one sided friendship or not. Um, so like I said, I'm not saying it to scare you. I'm not saying it to say oh you shouldn't be friends with people. I'm just saying be wary of it and don't necessarily think like the person is like out to get you. It's just you know it's a cultural thing. Um, and I don't want, and I don't say it's a cultural thing to mean like every South African is like that. Um, and because no group of people is a monolith. So hopefully I'm saying that clearly because I don't want to offend anybody. It's just sharing my experience. You think, do you think that was, that is fair? No, 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 that's fair. That's a fair assessment. Okay. It's a fair assessment. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, and again, this is. A, a, an experience that we're going through like we learn as we go and um just because we're having difficulties doesn't mean that this is not a beautiful place 
to live and learn and grow. Um, but we find that it's a lot of YouTubers that like don't really tell all of it. Don't really keep it a hundred. And and that's why we're telling, and that's why we have Testimony Tuesday where we can like, this is the stuff that, you know, maybe people don't really talk about. You know, they just talk about it with their their spouse or, you know, their really close family or whatever. But I feel like it's something that might that might compare to somebody else's experience or that you might not expect. And so that's why we're doing this. Um, so we can share those things with you guys. So you can have a full picture of not just what it's like to be here, but just being away from your family and, and, and moving across the world. Sounds good. All right. Well, what? I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you appreciate it. Make sure you hit the like button. Subscribe. And till next time. What, Sunday? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll be in the States, so we have to go live like that. We'll be separately, but together. Yes. <laughs> we'll be separate, but together. Peace out.